10 a.m. Welcome to this place of worship this morning offered by Presbyterian Church in Norwood. With so many challenges and conflicts in this world as we experience these days, our hearts truly aches with those who are truly devastated by war and violence. We know that from the lessons of our mother, Revenge is not always the solution, and it only intensifies conflict and leads us into a sheer destruction. But throughout all these calamities and conflicts, we know that for one thing, that God has never forsaken God's people, all God's people. And God will be there for us in times of our deep need. I'm recalling the uh, word from Isaiah chapter 41. God says, don't be afraid, for I am with you. Don't be discouraged, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, and I will help you, and I will hold you up with my righteous or victorious right hand. So during our worship, as we share our solidarity with all those people living and struggling in the war-torn places throughout the globe, and let us open our heart and heed to God's voice calling us to be uh, peacemakers, peacemakers in our world and wherever we get together through our actions of care, and mutual support that we express the love of God, the real and tangible in our daily lives. So brothers and sisters, open our heart. Let us worship God in spirit and in truth. For God, for the day of Yahweh is near. Yes, yes. Yahweh yes. has prepared yes. a sacrifice yes. and has yes. consecrated yes. the guests. Yes. Fulfill the promise you make to Yahweh your God. The great, the great day of Yahweh, Yahweh is near, near and coming with speed.
turn away from sin and be faithful to Christ. As we offer ourselves to Him in repentance and faith, we renew our confidence and trust in His mercy. Let us confess our sins in silence. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. We confess our sins. He who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Believe in the good news of Jesus Christ. Thank you, class, from many people. 
One was saying thank you for the gifts I gave her for her newborn son. Another was to say thank you for attending a friend's bridal shower and wedding. And the other was thanking me for supporting her through the loss of her father. No matter the season, whether good or bad, you can always say thank you. And the person receiving the words of thanks will be filled with joy and will feel appreciated. If as human beings we like it when people show us gratitude, then God must also delight in us when we show gratitude. He is more inclined to continue blessing us based on our gratitude. Today we will look at the story of the ten lepers. As Jesus was walking away, the lepers called out to him, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. When Jesus heard them, he healed them and told them to show themselves to the priest who would declare them clean of leprosy and allow them back into the community. On their way to the priest, they saw that their skin was free from leprosy. They were happy and began rejoicing. Suddenly, one stopped and went back, praising God. With a loud voice, he threw himself at Jesus' feet and said, Thank you. Jesus said to him, Weren't there ten of you who were healed? Where are the other nine? Only one out of the ten remembered to say thank you. Isn't it sad that only one person went back to thank Jesus? In the same way, we must not forget to say thank you when God does good things for us. Let us thank him with the same amount of happiness, joy, and dancing we had when we received the good things. Let us remember to stop dead on our tracks and say thank you for all that Jesus does for us. And I hope you also remember to say thank you to the people that made all the food we had on Thanksgiving. If not, don't forget to thank them after service. It's never too late to say thank you. Let us pray. Repeat after me. Dear Lord, you give us everything we need. You give us everything we need. But we often forget to say thank you. We often forget to say thank you. We thank you now. Thank you now. And ask you to help us to remember to give thanks. Not only to you, but to everyone who does good for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's pray all together a prayer of illumination. Enlighten us with your spirit, motivate us with your word, remind us of your commands, challenge us to live in your way, hold us accountable to do more and sing and pray. Amen. Today's God's word is Numbers chapter 11, verse 1 to 9. Now the people complained about their hardships in the hearing of the law, and when he heard them, his anger was aroused. Their fire from the Lord burned among them and consumed the son of the outskirts of the camp. Then the people cried out to Moses, he prayed to the Lord, and the fire died down. So their place was called Tabora, because fire from the Lord had burned among them. The rebel widow began to crave by the food, and again the Israelites started wailing and said, If only you had meat to eat. We remember the fish we ate in Egypt at no cost. Also the cucumbers, melons, leeks, onions, and garlic. But now we have lost our appetite. We never seen anything but this manner. The manna was like a coriander seed and looked like risen. The people met around the gathering and they ground it in a hand mill or crushed it in a mortar. They cooked it in a, in a pot or made it into loaves and it tasted like something made with olive oil. When the dew settled on the camp at night, the manna also came down.
sin that pains all over the biblical narrative and one of the most frequently committed sins. When you complain, you lose the sight of God. Therefore, the Bible deals with the sin of resentment and complaining quite seriously. Resentment and complaints are commonly identified as a sins of the unbelief. Look carefully in today's text, in Numbers chapter 11 and verse 4. The Bible records in the verse 4 that the rabbi with them began to crave other food. These rabbi are those who came out from Egypt with Israel. They were slain who were captured at a different battlefield elsewhere, and they were not Israelites. Perhaps they too longed to be set free from the oppression of Pharaoh. Indeed, the rabbi always instigated resentment among people. They always sought to find something to complain about. And the people of God learned this so easily, and they joined in chorus. Today's scene is a case at point. The Israelite and the rival among them was sick of eating manna that God provided on daily basis in the wilderness. Thus they joined in a campaign of complaint. They protested God's goodness and mercy, and they demanded God to change the menu, to change the menu for something better. I wonder what makes people complain. Why does our heart fear not getting enough of what we want? The book of Numbers is a living testimony about the journey of Israelites set out into a hopeful expectation. They were very grateful. 
and excited to be set free from the bondage of slavery and pursue a journey toward the promised land. But along the way in the wilderness, they complained about the leadership of Moses, some of the liturgies of Aaron, and even the guidance of God. The central theme of the book of Numbers is this. Remember, remember the grace of God who brought you out of Egypt. Remember, living a Christian life and faithful, faithful life is intimately connected with memory. When people remember those things that they must remember, and forget and discard those things that they need to forget. I think that is a good thing. To remember what we ought to not forget and to forget that needs to be forgotten. However, people often do the exactly the opposite. They often remember what needs to forget about and forget that what, what they should remember. And this is exactly what we see among the people of Israel in the wilderness. <clears throat> Throughout the journey of our life, there are essential things that I think we must remember. The faces and names of family members. Mother, father, brother and sister, husband and wife, our children, our friends, and those who extended love and grace on our behalf. Sometimes it is a heartbreaking visiting Ruth and Judy on their good days, they recognize me. But other days, they are wondering who I am. In remembering, remembering them in their good deeds, we thank them and we honor our God. So the central theme of the book of Numbers is do not forget. Do not forget the gift of freedom God offered you, O Israel. Do not forget the days under the curse of slavery and oppression. Do not forget the hardships that you have endured in chains that that destroys your dignity. Do not forget the miracles that God led you through the walk, through the Red Sea. Do not forget the mercy that God provided, the water to drink, to quench your thirst from the desert. And do not forget the gift of manna that satisfies your hunger. As long as you don't forget these things, you will save your soul from mocking God with the vain words and resentment. The psalmist urges us to, and we read this Psalm 103 last Sunday, listen it again. Praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives you all your sins, who heals all your disease, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion, who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like an eagle. In remembering God's unfailing love, in remembering God's presence and consistent presence in our life, we can stand righteous before God, and we can stand generously before this world. In the book of Exodus, in the 16th chapter, the Bible records that when the people of Israel gathered, the white stuff like a horrendous seed called manna for the first time, and when they tasted it, it was like in Exodus chapter 16 and verse 31, Recorded in the Bible, it was taste like wafers made with honey. I like that wafer crackers. I love it with cream. 
They said it's like a wafers made with the honeys. They were grateful. They were glad to eat them, the delicious manna that God showered them from heaven. But after for a while, as they gathered them to make the cakes and they didn't like as much. Now in the book of number 11th chapter, manna is described as Thomas read this morning, something plain made with olive oil. You know, there is a big difference between wafers made with honey to now something plain with olive oil. Do you see what's happening here? Man, I was described earlier in the book of Exodus like a wafers cooked in the honey. But now it has become something plain cooked with olive oil. oil. But that is not the end. In the later chapters, in chapter 21 in the book of Numbers, people of Israel protested. And they spoke against Moses and said, Why have you brought us out from Egypt to die in this barren wilderness? There is no bread, there is no fish, there is no garlic and all of this kind of nice green stuff. There is no water. And what they said, we detest, we detest this miserable food. The manna that God has provided to save them from starvation has now become this miserable food. When you and I take things for granted, when we are blinded to see the gift of life joy of meaningful relationship and when we fail to appreciate the common things that we cherish daily resentment is almost inevitable to avoid to protest to complain against the giver of life the giver of life and health and the giver of joy and happiness and the giver of eternal life in jesus christ do you see in your life when this manner of your passion and your dream just turn into something mundane like cooked in an olive oil? What is it that in your life the extraordinary has turned into just the ordinary? And then before you know it, this ordinary things turn into a meaningless meaningless routines. Like the manner of love that God has provided us, when we lose our focus, the very gift of love may turn into something stale and boring. Is there anything in your life and in your faith work with Jesus that you feel that you are losing out on his initial excitement, initial gratefulness. What about your excitement and expectation towards your loved ones? What about, about your study? What about, about your job? What about your dedication to God and God's people? What about the mission that inspires you in the beginning? If you detect in any aspects of your life where manna cooked with honey turns into something plain cooked in oil or rather this miserable food, I think it is time to reflect seriously whether the flame of our first love or first commitment, that hope that possibility is still burning brightly in your soul. One of the great tragedies in life is to lose the sight of faith. Faith enables us to see the fully grown apple trees from a single apple seed. Faith enables us to dream 
until the full realization of our aspiration. Faith helps us to see the beautiful butterfly from an ugly cocoon. In faith, we see how God helps us to see the unseen and unrealized blessings and potentials within us, within every one of us. Morris Nithely described this in his book, You Cannot, But I Can. And he says, give some examples. One of the greatest physicists, Albert Einstein, couldn't speak until he was four years old and couldn't read until he was seven years old. One of the greatest composers, Beethoven, was criticized by his music teacher that he has no inherent musical talent to be a great composer. Thomas Edison was told by his great teacher as an unteachable child. The founder of Disney, Walt Disney Corporation, Walt Disney, was fired because people believe that he lacks creativity. One of the greatest singers in the world, Caruso, was discouraged by his voice teacher that he has no chance to be a vocalist. But they all overcame ordeals and despairs and discouragement and challenges. They claimed the victories rising above difficult situations in their lives. So before you utter with resentment, I cannot do this. There is no hope in us. I cannot do that. Give yourself every worry, every broken heart to God and trust God. Give your dream to God. Give all your cares and anxiety to God. Do not lose your sight from God. If only you can see with the eyes of faith and believe in God's faithful presence in your life, you can overcome pretty much anything, anything in your life. A rabbi in Hebraic tradition, he rendered this prayer, and, I, and I'm quoting, O oh God, you truly have blessed me with many, many good things. But I dare to grant me just one more thing now. Grant me, O oh God, the eyes of mine, that I may, I may be able to see, and I may be able to thank you and praise you for all your blessings in my life. Amen. As we reflect on the message, let us join the hymn number 717 for the life that you have given.
sharing time. So I would like to invite to see where whether we have some announcement. Yes, Bonnie. I have a few. Um, just a reminder that session uh, not tomorrow, but next Monday we'll have our monthly meeting. Um, also, in that regard to the pledges for 2023, um, if you can please fulfill the pledges that you have already to fill it out this year and also put in your pledges for 2024. And finally, as we enter into Advent, we need some help. Hopefully, from some of the gentlemen in the meeting who actually knows where the tree is to bring the tree up, hopefully, from the basement so we can set it up and get it set right for next Sunday. Thank you. And if uh, some of you can help us to just bring the trees up here, um, Jisan, our deacon, uh, in the second service, and several other woman members will decorate um, instead of a carol who is going through a another round of a chemo, which really brings her down in terms of vitality and mobility. So please um, keep that in mind, and thank you. Um, also, Tim? Yes. Uh, um, I'm collecting the clothes for the Mercy Center, so if you have any clothes you're cleaning out of your closet, you can leave in the back of the church or on my porch. Okay, thank you, Chris. Thank you for doing this faithfully. Um, so please do that. And uh, let's move on to uh, choice and concern. Choice and concern. Yes. Um, just a reminder that as the season is being upon us, and we will be collecting the points of so um, more information about one. Okay, points of Asia? Points of Asia. Yes, points of Asia. Um, we will prepare the envelope by next Sunday, put it in the, in the table in the bag. Thank you. Any choice and concern? Yes, yes. Kisu? Okay, uh, so Christmas is coming. So uh, our prior uh, preparing for the Christmas Eve, especially evening service, so with the Korean congregation. So we are uh, supposed to sing the Handel's Hallelujah. So it's me a little longer and a little everybody singing the uh, Christmas season. But unfortunately, this time a little delay. Maybe I think we try the uh, next Easter service again. So, so this time, this uh, coming Christmas Eve, we are singing the, uh, the Holy City. This is a very famous song too. So I think everybody can read it at times. So um, we are doing the practice from December 7, 14, 20, 1st, we have three times, and Thursday is 7 o'clock. But if you can join, please come. If I know we, we are very busy in the uh, holiday season. So I just prepared the all the, uh, the uh, seat in here. So, Everybody come in join the uh, our uh, the Christmas Eve uh, uh, the choir. Everybody welcome and uh, everybody welcome to practice for uh, December uh, Thursdays in the uh, choir practice. Thank you, everyone. That's it. Thank you. Um, you know, almost three years of COVID has really brought us down from gathering, especially uh, preparing for choirs. Um, please, now let us really, especially to celebrate Christmas Eve, let us get together uh, these three times, December 7th, 14th, and 21st. Um, Kisu, is Korean choir members who try to come also on Thursday evening? Yes. Yes, okay, so let us really get, get together and prepare for this uh, wonderful um, celebration. Any other joys and concern? Yes. I have a concern. It goes way back to the early 50s when there were two families, this Pamela 
and the convicts who lived next door to each other with nine children. Um, we shared many things over the years. The families moved to Dumont and we moved to Norwood, but our mothers got blessed and kept our families together all these years. And uh, my prayer is for the Congress families who lost the youngest member of their family at 66 years old last Thursday. So prayers for the Congress family, for their soul, and also for the families who really do love the family. Thank you for sharing. Um, sorry, I couldn't hear everything you said, but um, um, we will keep them in our prayers. And any other jewels of concern? I have a similar uh, concern. My longtime neighbor, who Lola Rokich, uh, who just turned 90 this summer, is in hospice at home, and uh, I'm praying for her so uh, heartily. And she was always outside in her yard and engaged with everybody. All, I mean, everybody knew her. She worked at the library up until she was 88, I think, and uh, this is a wonderful woman who's eight children. She had five children and then she had triplets. <laughs> so she has a crowd to take care of her, but uh, they're all coming from everywhere. And uh, But she's uh, she is just a, 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 a focal point of our little neighborhood in here. Mm -hmm. It's always just to have that kind of neighbors, yes. right? And also, I would like for India, please keep Henry's father, who was struggling with cancer treatment mm -hmm. in Korea. Um, may the presence of God be encouraging there and provide comfort and hope among all the family members. Let us join us. Timothy, one more. Yes. Frank. Yes, yeah, Frank. Pastor Timothy, prayers, obviously, there's conflict in the world that you know obviously in the Middle East Israel and Palestine and the uh, Ukraine but there's a lot of other conflicts in the world that seem to be on the back burner such as Sudan and uh, the ethnic cleansing going on and it's really serious uh, where's the outrage over there for what's going on thank you Greg Thank you for reminding us once again. Let us pray together. Holy God, we give you thanks that your people have gathered here in your name. Gather together our offerings and pledges. Gather together our hope that we might give back a little something of what we have received from you for others. Your abiding light, shining force to each one of us through the love and companionship and services of this church community. God of abundance, fount of every blessing, give of all life, teach us to give as you do, without counting the cost, with the same care for our neighbors that we show ourselves as we share you by Bonnie and Anne. Let these pledges and our bringing of offerings, pledges also for 2024, be a reminder of all that is possible through generosity, rooted in your love, O oh God. We call on us, you call on us, to give a thanks to the Lord in all seasons. And so we pray that our gratitude can be a balm for all those who are hurting today who are far from you. We pray for those who are healing in body, mind, and spirit. A loving God, give Carol, Viola, Judy, Ruth, and Umi's father in your arms at this moment. Comfort them with your presence, O oh God. We pray especially for the people caught in the war-torn places, regions of Gaza and Israel and Middle East, 
Ukraine and Sudan, North and North Korea, for the lands where peace feels too far and too small a world to be a solution. But we place our hope in you, God who is a way maker. Make a way for your peace, the peace that passes all human understanding, even where it feels most impossible. We thank you for all that has led us to this day. And so with great expectation, we pray in Jesus' name who ushers us soon into the season of Advent and who also taught us to pray, together joining our voice, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, all God requires from us is whatever that we have a little portion of our life that we treasure. So let us bring at this time, not only just what God has given us, but with the heart and part of our life and time as well. Let us give our offerings in great honors.
all hope and love is seen in our midst this week. In days when world of fear abound, may you find unity with your brothers and sisters around the hope that we share in Christ. For our Savior is risen and His Spirit lives in us today. In days when wars of hate abound, may you find unity with your brothers and sisters around the love that we share in Christ. Letting the love you received from the Father overflow to those around you. May the Holy Spirit create in each of us an eagerness to maintain unity and bless us with the wisdom to know when and how to speak and act so that we might translate the heart of our King into this world and thus see God's kingdom to take the shape around us. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up His countenance to you and give you peace now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.